Hi, my name is Eric Morse. When I was about 10 years old, I heard my first rap song, which frankly was one of the first rap songs ever because I'm just that old. Um, it blew my mind. It was the first time I'd ever heard anything like that. And all I knew was that I wanted more of it and more and more and more of it. And I started listening to every rap song and every hip hop artist and every new record I could get my hands on. And all the way through my teenage years, I was obsessed with hip hop music. And when I was in my 20s and early 30s, I became a hip hop DJ. And um, it was just the thing that I loved and wanted to do and know more about. And then I had kids. And having kids, one of the things you learn is that you want to share everything you love with your kids. And so what I did is I wrote a book. What is hip hop? It's the story of the hip hop movement and the hip hop culture from the beginning all the way up until now. And it includes some of my favorite hip hop artists. And my favorite thing about this book is the artwork. My friend Annie, who lives in Los Angeles, did these amazing little sculptures and figurines out of Play-Doh. Um, and uh, I just love looking at it, and I think you're going to enjoy it too. And I'm going to try to get you some good close-ups so you can look at the pages and the amazing uh, Play-Doh work as I go along. So, here we go. What is hip-hop? In the beginning, there was a beat. Two records spinning, and the crowd got on its feet. B-boys and B-girls started getting, getting down, and soon the whole world was in love with the sound. They called it hip-hop, a whole new mystique, not disco or pop. It was totally unique. The Boogie Down Bronx is where our story begins. That's where DJ Cool Herc made the record spin. Herc put the same track on tables one and two, and he bounced the beat back to make something new. And Grandmaster Flash, a DJ one-man band, revolutionized the scratch with his lightning-fast hands. When you're close to the edge, it's a struggle to survive. That's the story of the message from Flash and the Furious Five. Boogie Down Productions had a political flow KRS-One and Scott LaRock sure could put on a show. The world lost Scott way before its time, but KRS went on to preach UNITY. If I ruled the world, all the boys and girls would know the man who brought us all the breaks, the one and only Curtis Blow. He came from Harlem, the first rapper to go gold. The breaks broke a record with half a million sold. Curtis had another song that was bigger than them all, an ode to his favorite sport. We're talking basketball. Then, a muscular teen from the borough of Queens in a Kangol hat burst on the scene. He went by the name Ladies Love Cool James and in no time flat earned his worldwide fame. He was known as LL. He was rocking the bells. When he stepped up to bat, he was doing it well. LL Cool J loved girls around the way. Don't call it a comeback because he was here to stay. While we're on the subject, let's get another thing clear. There's much more to hip hop than what you can hear. B-boys and B-girls gave the world something new. Graffiti and breakdancing defined hip hop too. Graffiti kids made murals where people could see them. Brick walls and subway cars were their urban museum. All the break dancers rocked their bodies to the beat. Don't need anything fancy, just cardboard in the street. Popping, locking, and a whole lot more. The windmill and the worm and backspins on the floor. Joe plus Daryl equals Run DMC. At add Jam Master J and the pair makes three. Run, D, and Jason with Adidas on their feet, in tracksuits meant for racing, always rapping to the beat. It's tricky to rock a rhyme. It's a very special skill. But they nailed it every time, and they're beloved still. 
The rap they rapped with Aerosmith on Walk This Way. Hip hop's first rock stars were Daryl, Joe, and Jay. Back in those days, many geniuses were found. Cool Modi, Big Daddy Kane, and Biz Marquis found renown. And mighty Queen Latifah earned her royal crown. Marquis could rap and sing on Nobody Beats the Biz, but if each star has a thing, beatboxing was his. Cool Mo D went platinum with Wild Wild West. When he had a beef with Cool J, each proclaimed himself the best. Big Daddy Kane had skills like no one ever saw. MCs all made way whenever Kane got raw. Queen Latifah stood out as one of the best to ever do it. She'd go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anyone, and every rapper knew it. Getting paid in full is every rapper's dream. It's also an album by Eric B. and Rakim. Rakim's the microphone fiend, and Eric B. is president. The lyrics were esteemed. DJ skill was evident. The words could paint a picture with syncopated rhyme. A magical hip-hop mixture among the best of all time. Hip-hop loves a party, and every party needs a beat. But sometimes, you gotta fight the power and take it to the streets. Chuck D and Flavor Flav, a legendary pair, shined a light on racism and a world that was unfair. A nation of millions couldn't hold public enemy back. They vowed to overcome fear of a planet that was about black. B-E-A-S-T-I-E. -E. I'll spell the word out so everyone can see. Ad Rock, Mike MCA, and even Mr. Mike D. Fighting for their rights, most definitely. They had a funny way with words, and they loved 70s funk. They could sometimes be heard playing good old-fashioned punk. The world was astounded when they dropped Paul's Boutique at the fresh way it sounded and the sampling technique. Three was the magic number for these plugs from Long Island, who first made their name with Three Feet High and Rising. People called them hippies with their hair up in dreads, but De La Soul had talent and earned their hip-hop cred. Plugs one, two, and three climbed to the top. De La Soul blew up but they never went pop. Two talented ladies in a field full of boys. Salt and Peppa held their own and played them all like toys. Rap royalty from Queens, no pun intended. Their songs weren't always clean and some people were offended. But Push It was the jam and so was What A Man. Their success was proof girls can do what boys can. Microphone check. One, two, what is this? It's a tribe called Quest with a flow so vicious. They had styles upon styles upon styles, to be exact. Ali, Shahid, and Fife, and Q-Tip, the abstract. Midnight Marauders and Beats, Rhymes, and Life made hip-hop heroes out of Ali, Tip, and Fife. Four MCs and one DJ, straight out of Compton down in South Central LA. Yella, Ice Cube, and Easy, MC Ren, and of course Dr. Dre, put them all together and you get NWA. There was violence in their songs and some other bad things too. Call it right or wrong, they sang of a world they knew. One rapper stood out from the others pictured here. Ice Cube was about to have a storied career. Cube was no lazy slacker, he became an all-time great. As a rapper and an actor, he knew how to captivate. Bow wow wow, yippee yo, yippee yay. Who is this now coming out of LA? Snoop Doggy Dog, produced by Dr. Dre. Moving the crowd every single day. Snoop's smooth Cali flow and his smoky hip hop haze masked a razor sharp wit and a biting turn of phrase. But no one speaks of wit without the Marshall Mathers name. The lyrics he would spit or anything but tame. Slim Shady was to Eminem what Dr. Jekyll was to Hyde. Some people just have in them an evil genius deep inside. Songs like My Name Is and The Scary Story Stan made Eminem famous, hip-hop's most wanted man. 
one of the biggest stars on the whole west side, this skinny kid named Tupac, a source of California pride. The poster boy for Thug Life, he seemed to cultivate drama, but he showed a sensitive side on his hit song, Dear Mama. Back in New York City, change was in the air. A new crew called Bad Boy, led by an illustrious pair. The big one was Smalls, the notorious B.I.G. The other one was Combs, a.k.a. Puff Daddy. They sang Biggie, 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 and anyone could see just how his words were hypnotizing. Let's pause for a second. This is a PSA, a public service announcement, as some people say. The Wu-Tang Clan ain't nothing to mess with. A clan from Staten Island made up of 10 MCs. They had myriad styles and they were known as killer bees. Over New York City arose an imposing figure. Most called him Jay-Z or Hova and sometimes Jigga. Born in the Marcy Projects, that's down in Bed-Stuy, he could rap about subjects completely on the fly. Hard Knock Life was a breakthrough song. He became a global celebrity before very long. Outcast down in Atlanta, call it the Dirty South, had a sweet southern twang and they turned the party out. Chicago is in the Midwest of this grand old USA. Some people know it best as the birthplace of Kanye. We could write a whole book about our friend Mr. West. No matter where you look, he proclaims himself the best. In the Virginia Commonwealth, another star flies high. That's where Missy Elliott is super duper fly. Now let's talk about Nikki. She's got the super bass. She flows fast and wicked and all up in your face. With Roman and Barbie and her other alter egos, her fans are like an army following wherever she goes. In the year 2010, Drake made his debut. Don't know where you've been if you missed the rave reviews. Drake can rap and act and sing. He's a true triple threat. His hit song, Hotline Bling, was as big as it could get. Here's another MC flirting with the avant-garde. His clever wording made him rap's new star. He seems quieter, more thoughtful by far. A rapper and a writer, that's Kendrick Lamar. By now, the culture's spread to every corner of the globe. Inside every head is a hip-hop frontal lobe. Breakdancing lives on. They teach graffiti in schools. MCs have fashion lines, and DJs epitomize cool. But hip-hop remains, deep down at its heart, a unique expression, an urban form of art. What is hip-hop?